did not know what you were asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink? This is the question that Jesus asked James and John in today's gospel. And it's the same question that we are asked every day of our lives. When Jesus speaks of his cup, he is speaking of it in terms of his life. In other words, he's asking them if they can follow him and follow the way of the life that he led. And of course, they answer with the resounding yes. But Jesus knew that they didn't know what they were saying. He knew that they were jumping to the glory and the power part, but had no thought about the suffering part, about the pain, the rejection, and the loneliness that he would be asked to endure. And isn't it that way so often with us as well? It's easy for us to say yes to Jesus when everything is going well, when we feel the hand of God upon our shoulders, so to speak. Then everything that we learn of our loving and caring God makes sense, and his love and care for us is demonstrated by the blessings we receive in our lives. But what about when that blessedness is taken away? What about the times when it seems that God has abandoned us and left us prone to the evils of sin? When our lives are afflicted with suffering and pain? When all our plans, our dreams are torn apart and our life seems to be one of misery and no real hope of ever changing for the better? An illness, a divorce, a disabling accident, sometimes all three of them at the same time. How are we to pray to a loving and caring God when it seems that all the good things that we have are suddenly taken away? Yet, I think deep in our hearts, we know that there is a value to the suffering and pain. In our world that we live in, suffering and pain is a bad thing and something that needs to be avoided at all costs. We have meds to deaden the pain. We have distractions to divert the pain. And too often, our efforts to escape the pain ends up in causing us more pain. We attempt to deaden the pain with alcohol and drugs. We seek to divert the pain through gambling or pornography or other things. We have so many ways to escape the difficulties and the sufferings that we face in this life. But there will come a time when there is no escape, when there is no drug that can deaden the pain and no diversion that can distract the pain. And when that day comes, unless we can find another way to deal with that pain, we will become lost in misery and despair. Jesus is that other way. When Jesus took on flesh, he took on all that there is to be human, all that is except for sin. He took on the joys of a loving family. He took on the satisfaction of intimate friendships with his apostles. He took on the pleasures of a good meal and a good cup of wine. But he also took on the suffering. He also took on the pain. He accepted the pain and suffering as part of the woundedness and the brokenness of his human condition. Not as part of something outside of himself, but as part of, part of whom he was in his humanity. And it's a part of who we are as well. Suffering and sorrow are a part of our own human condition, something that we need to accept as part and parcel of who and what we are. And when we are constantly trying to fight it, we are fighting against the reality of life. We are rejecting that cup that has been given to us to drink. That's a hard teaching. Why does one person have to suffer more than another? We have people here in this church who have been struggling with difficulties and sufferings for years with no cure in sight. We have people struggling with the irreversible effects of the aging process. We have people struggling with debilitating diseases for which there is no cure. We have people struggling with permanent disabling injuries. These are all a part of the reality of our life. And when we look on these things only as obstructions, as evils to be overcome, we are missing the opportunity for the grace that they can be. For what were the most grace-filled moments of Jesus' life? Think about it. There were so many grace-filled moments, like at the Sermon on the Mount, or his, with all of his healing miracles, at the top of Mount Horeb with the Transfiguration. So many moments of grace. But carrying and dying on the cross, 
These are the moments that brought about our salvation. We too have many grace filled moments in our own lives, but it is in these moments of difficulty and suffering that we can come closest to drinking the cup from which he drank and being baptized with the baptism with which he was baptized. So when difficulties and sufferings come our way, whether they be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, let us not get lost in anger and frustration and despair. Let us try to see in them the opportunity for grace that they can become. Just as Jesus put all his faith and trust in the Father, that there was a purpose for the injustice and the insanity of his suffering and of his death, so let us also put our faith in the goodness of God, that there is indeed a reason for all this pain and sorrow in the world, and that God can make good come out of anything. Yes, there will be moments when we cry out in pain and frustration. Even Jesus prayed, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But we can always hold firm to the belief that there is a master plan, a plan that we call salvation. Each one of us has been given our own unique cup to drink, a cup that can sometimes be sweet and sometimes so very bitter. But only by accepting the cup with all, the, all of its tragedies, injustices, misunderstandings, and absurdities that can sometimes invade our lives, only by drinking of our cup to its fullest can we find peace within ourselves. And when we find peace within ourselves, only then can we sow love where there is hatred. Only then can we plant forgiveness where there is injury. And only then can we inspire faith where there is despair. <clears throat>